Yes. We're live. Hopefully you will have now cut your six um, little uh, cuts into them. The thing with this to check is when you're cutting down, okay, if you look from the side here, if this is your material and you've marked out your line you're going to cut down to, it is better, boys, at the back of you are playing with things on this thing, put it down. It is better to cut down and leave a little gap, right, than cut down to the line and just go over. It's a lot better to leave a little gap. So just wear that in mind for the next time. So we've got these cuts down here. All right. The next step is to actually remove this material. Okay. The reason we put these cuts in is because they call the relief cuts, and what it does is it means it makes it easier to remove it in small chunks, not big chunks. So, Ethan, could you grab me one of the blue-handed chisels on the back wall? What we do is we place this into the bench uh, vise, like so, like we had just before. So it's sticking out. Now this is the bit, boys. You need to really pay close attention and look at this. Thank you very much, Ethan. Of all the tools, boys, of all the tools in this room, this is the one that causes the most accidents. It's the humble chisel, because people forget how sharp it is. Now, I haven't sharpened these yet, but I will be sharpening them after we've used this a little while, okay? And so they're so sharp that you can go like, with a piece of paper, and it will slice it in half, okay? They're really, really sharp. When you use chisels, you need to think of them, hi listening, like knives. If you were cutting a piece of chicken, right, at home, for your dinner, have you ever seen mum and dad do it? Do they do it like this? Yeah. <laughs> I hope not. Because you're gonna mash you're gonna mash your chicken up, right? No, what they would be doing, what they'd be doing is very carefully slicing, wouldn't they? <laughs> it's not the sharp edge. And so when you're slicing or when that technique of trying to slide a blade through the material is the same on the chisel. The sharp point on these are the corners and the flat edge here, that one flat edge. Does that make sense to you nines? Yes. So you're gonna just have to cue in really carefully here and listen. We use this flat surface here to guide our chisel on a flat surface along where our material is. When we get down to the bottom, we flip it over and we use the bevel, and that's where this chisel's name comes from. This is actually called a beveled edge chisel because it's got bevels on the edges. We use that to then guide ourselves on the right angle because it's gonna be down in their material and we have to push through. All of the accidents that happen with chisel, like 99% of them, and nearly all of the accidents that happen in workshops are cause of chisels. It's because students do this one thing wrong. If I see you doing it, I will yell and you will be thrown out the room. Do not put your other hand in front of your chisel blade, ever, boys. Never, ever, ever put your chisel, right, anywhere near where you're pushing into your hand, your leg, your arm, someone else's like body. You always hold these two-handed and your other hand goes behind the front edge. Okay? The only time you might modify that is if you were using a mallet, at which point it would look something like this. But we don't need mallets. These are sharp enough to use without and it's not hard timber. So to use this chisel in this situation once we've got this, what you do is you line it up where you've cut grooves down, okay, like here, but from the other direction. And what you do is you put it on an angle, right? So you try and keep it flat, not angled in. Thank you, Mr. McKay. And we just tap through. And that's it. I'm gonna go slightly lower this time. And tap through. Now, one of the things that always damages these hoop heaps bad and it will ruin your work is, you don't tap from this side through to the other side. Because when you're going through this kind of material, it will break out. Okay, so as we're working through this, now I'm sorry I'm doing this on yours so much, but I'm just going to do a little bit more. You slowly drop the chisel height down until you just get down to that line, except you don't do quite to the line, you just leave it slightly above. Now, what you should find is, um, Kev, could you come a little bit closer to see? What you'll find is, and everyone else you can kind of see it a bit easier, when you get down to that level, it, the cuts disappear. And so to remove the last bit of material, what we do is we kind of put our thumb on the side of the blade, boys and girls. The thumb is on the side. And then we put it onto the material. And usually you put like your hand on one side, but you never put it on the other side. This is where people hurt themselves. You always put it to the edge. And when you push, you also push sideways with your other hand. See that? And that then gives you that slicing action with your chisel, which means that then you can cut through 
the harder material that doesn't have the, the um, cut lines in it. Does that make sense? So, if you're up to this stage where you've cut out the majority of your material, that is the next step. The rest of you...